Sammy, Gareth Southgate, I noticed his name's his first squad since the World Cup. We were talking about the World Cup there moments ago with your man from Amnesty. It's his first squad since Qatar. He names it Thursday for the Euro 2024 qualifiers, Italy and Ukraine. Thomas Frank, the manager of Brentford, thinks that Ivan Tony deserves to be called up by Southgate this week, despite the court's tricky situation regarding the strikers' breach of betting rules. Tony's accepted a number of the offences, but he's challenging others. The FA, meantime, says it's all right. He can be selected if Gareth wants him. This was Thomas Frank on the matter. If you look at the performances, I don't think you can get past him. But I know there's different types, and I know there's... It depends what kind of strikers you want, but I think he's, he's shown every... On numbers, goals, uh, assist. Uh, which is, I guess, pretty two good numbers to be high on, uh, and performances that he is the the number two uh, behind um, behind Ivan. I understand that Rashford can play the striker as well, but he's a striker or a winger and a different type. So, but yeah, so so I understand it's a it's a tricky situation overall. I just think he's a very good striker. He is a very good player, and he's showing that for Brentford, who've had a great season. Yeah. What we do know is off the field, Tony's been charged with a total of 262 breaches of FA guidelines between February 2017, January 2021, when he was a player at Scunthorpe, Wigan, Peterborough and Brentford. Um, that's a lot of breaches of guidelines. As yep. I said, uh, breach of betting rules. He's accepted some, challenging others. The FA say he can be selected. So should Gar select him? Um, on form? Absolutely. Um, on form, he should have been selected to go to the World Cup. Um, but he wasn't. And one has to wonder why that was. Because he was brought into a squad and never kicked a ball. Ridiculous. What was the point of that? This so, story came out just before the World Cup. Mm -hmm. um, so on form, absolutely. If the FA spent less time waving in an independent regulator when it's actually their job and did the job that they were supposed to do, which is administrate the game, these things would have outcomes far quicker and far more concisely. Nothing's ever simple the moment you start making allegations that have serious consequences upon people because lo players and clubs have lots of money and they can use legal representation to try and make the matter more convoluted. But if we are led to believe that he has admitted to certain offences, then my original argument, which is that you have to consider it all in the mass, is probably flawed because if you've copped to it, then you're guilty. It's just a degree of guilt, not guilt. It's degrees of guilt. And if we are to believe the media reports... And I had a long conversation with his father, who was a really nice man, and I'm not going to portray his confidences. But if we are to believe what the media says and take it at face value, then he should be banned. And that ban should be in place now. And then the scale of it, whether it's expanded upon, because of the level of guilt that he has in terms of the amount of offences. But this is only on the basis that he has copped to things. Of course. If and he it's, hasn't, not, it's not Tony's fault that he's still being allowed if, to play. Well, it is. Because if he's copped to these things, then that's, that's guilt. He can't ban himself. No, they should ban him. So with that in mind, with that in mind, the FA should be doing a far more streamlined process. He should be asking for a quick outcome and wanting a quick outcome and demanding and remonstrating with the, the FA that these quick outcomes are deliberated and delivered because who wants the sword of Damocles over their head forever? I no, agree, but you no can't determine a ban if you don't know the extent of the guilt. No, but you can, you can suspend somebody pending action given the fact they've pleaded guilty to certain things. And if you're going to take and put competitive jeopardy at odds. Because you've, you've heard it, and I sort of push back on it. It's sort of whining, get on with the fact that when Fulham played Brentford the other day, sort of whining about it. And I do think they were whining, but they do actually have a point. They should have been able to beat Brentford on their own volition with a Tony in the side and not necessarily complain about the fact he was playing. But there is a case to be heard and there is a case to be answered and that case should be brought, brought quickly and concisely. And if he's saying no to all of them, then you cannot find him, you cannot adjudicate anything because he's not copying to anything but if he said well I'm guilty of those but not of those then there should be an instantaneous ban in place <clears throat> with a with a very quick resolution to the other outstanding matters because I do think it brings the game into disrepute and then you've got the situation where we know how the FA works we've seen how it works the reason why Gareth Southgate has got a job is not based upon merit initially it was based upon the fact that he was within the confines of the FA organisation and available because Sam Allardyce was a problem created a problem for them they had to get rid of Sam Allardyce because of Sam Allardyce's actions and their failure to put him under a proper contract that stopped him from doing it in the first place and then 
they brought in Southgate because he toes the line. The reasons why Brian Clough didn't get a job, the reasons why Terry Venables didn't keep the job was because of the FA's attitude towards problems. They duck away from them, they don't want any of this. So here in mind is a situation where the FA... Need, and, and we have people like Mark Bullen coming out and saying, let's wave in the independent regulator. Well, what in Christ's name are you going to do then? That's your job, that's what you're supposed to be doing. So right? I, can take, I take it from your tour and no Tony in the squad. I don't think so. No, if that's the, if that's the primary question we're trying to get answered, do you think he'll be in the squad? Every day of the week he should be in the squad for his performances. He's as good as any centre forward out there now. If he was playing for Man City, he'd scored 25, 30 goals for them too. I mean, I know Harlem will probably score 50, but notwithstanding that, he will score goals. When they first when they first came into the Premier League, there was a sort of whiffy, snobby attitude about always oh, a bit unorthodox. No, he wasn't. He was bleeding good. He's a good player. Okay, the Tony situation drags on. We're heading towards 12 noon. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.